Welcome to Academic Guru's Tutoring Thursday, where we answer all of your high school, college, and university questions. If you would like your question to be featured on next week's Tutoring Thursday, please submit your questions to questions at academicgurusinc.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay current with all of our new videos. In today's session, we'll be taking a look at the difference between scalars and vectors. So let's start off with what we mean by scalars. When we're talking about scalars, we're actually talking about describing the magnitude of a quantity without taking into account its direction. So what does that mean? Distance and speed are examples of scalars. So let's take distance for example. So let's say it's a nice sunny day and you decided to take a drive around your neighborhood. You drive 10 kilometers east, then you decide to drive 8 kilometers south, 10 kilometers west, and then you're returning 8 kilometers north back to your house. If you want to calculate the distance that you traveled, you would simply add the 10 kilometers, 8 kilometers, 10 kilometers, and 8 kilometers that you traveled, and you would find that you traveled a total of 36 kilometers. That's the distance. You can see here that you didn't take into account any direction. It didn't matter whether you went west, north, or east simply that you traveled a distance. So it's the magnitude of the quantity that we're considering here. By contrast, vectors describe both the magnitude of a quantity and the direction. So in this case, we do care about whether you're traveling east or west, for example. Other examples of vectors are velocity and acceleration. In the case of velocity, we care about how fast you're going, but we also care about what direction you're traveling. And the same applies to acceleration, where we're measuring how fast velocity is changing over time. To make this a little bit more clear, let's go back to my previous example, where we talked about it's a nice sunny day and we're taking a drive around our neighborhood. So again, the dimensions haven't changed. We're still driving 10 kilometers east, 8 kilometers south, 10 kilometers west, and 8 kilometers north. We determined that the distance traveled was a total of 36 kilometers. Now let's calculate the displacement. When we're calculating displacement by contrast, we're really concerned about where you started and where you finished at the end of your trip. So just by looking at my example here, you can see that the place that you started is no different from the place that you ended. You left home and you returned home. Therefore, while your distance came to a total of 36 kilometers, your displacement is actually zero. Let's have a closer look and understand why that is the case. In other words, how do you prove that on a test? I mentioned that with vectors, we're concerned with two things magnitude and direction. So the best way to demonstrate changes in direction or to take account of the changes in direction is to break the vector down into its components. To illustrate that, I'm going to transfer our little journey to a graph and then I'll explain later on how you would translate that into an equation. Thank you for tuning into our Tutoring Thursday channel. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. Until next week's Tutoring Thursday, happy studying.